Sorry, you hate me, don't you? This might look like a bunch of kids messing around in their bedrooms, and well, it is a bunch of kids messing around in their bedrooms, but they have some of the biggest audiences in Britain, and for some of them, it's a full-time job. We're talking about YouTube, the billion-dollar company that was founded in 2005. If you're under 30, it's probably a part of your everyday life. How YouTube can earn people money is that there's something called a partner program. When you get a few thousand subscribers or just a video that gets a lot of views, YouTube will invite you to put adverts on your video and then you get, albeit a very tiny proportion, some of the money from the adverts that go to it. Can you tell me how much you can make from it? It's, it's reasonable. I mean, some people, you know, people that get like hundreds of millions of views a month, they probably get a lot of money, but it's still absolutely ridiculously less than sort of like the same amount of views would get for TV. YouTube has built professional studios for the use of the most popular YouTubers. So we're entering the actual space here. This is where we have all those studio and production and editing suites. Partners can book these spaces right. um, as long as they have 50,000 subscribers. So this room is called Deep Focus and yep. it's the largest uh, production studio. You must have spent a fortune on this space because it's pretty state of the art. I mean, it's amazing. It's yeah. a huge investment. It's a way for us to show how much we care about creators and how much we're willing to uh, take them to the next level and really help them develop uh, their shooting techniques, their editing and lighting techniques, and really um, further enhance their production capabilities. The YouTube studios are like a student common room, somewhere to hang out with friends. Why do you think um, YouTube and Google are putting so much investment into what you're doing? What are they getting out of it? Uh, this place has been really good to get everyone to come together and make bigger stuff because I think everybody knows yeah. like animators and musicians and stuff so you, it, it's basically a, a, a film crew. I mean that's what you're getting out of it but what are they getting out of it because you know they're investing a, a higher quality of content. Right. right. Yeah. Just their, their, their aim with this place I think generally is to just buoy the quality of content. And a better quality of content will bring more viewers and with them of course a higher revenue from the advertising for YouTube. When broadcasting began, it was about educating, informing and entertaining. The viewer consumed whatever the programme maker offered. Now the future looks very different for the creators and the consumers. But is it a bright future? Not according to Andrew Keane, who founded Audio Cafe in the 90s. And the problem is that in the mid-90s, we all gave our content away for free. So the consumer has been spoiled. The consumer now assumes that everything should be free and no one's willing to open their wallet. No one's willing to pay for their content. Economic winners are the people who sold the equipment, who sold the, the, the digital means to creativity. But the creators themselves have not won, they've lost. Fewer and fewer people are able to make a living creating videos, making records, writing books. The internet has been a very, very bad thing for the professional creative community. Good thing or bad thing, it seems that YouTube is here to stay. For how long? Who knows?